You know that saying, curiosity killed the cat? That is one of the most incorrect sayings out there. Curiosity did not kill the cat. It's so totally wrong and they couldn't have been further from the truth. Asking questions and being curious about everything about your life is absolutely key to and fundamental to how we function as humans. So it's funny how we can have these sayings that get into popular culture and we kind of, you know, think it's good and bad. It's very often said to children in discipline as a discipline sort of thing. You know, I remember when asking my parents questions and, they, and them saying things like, curiosity killed the cat. You know, like that just sounded awful. You know, who's going to kill the cat? And why would curiosity kill the cat? It didn't make any sense. So, well, I'm your host, Dr. Caroline Leaf, and this, and welcome to my podcast, Cleaning Up the Mental Mess. And I'm going to talk to you about why curiosity did not kill the cat and maybe tell you some very obvious stuff. But I just want to remind you to be very curious. In fact, it's curiosity that will expand your life experience, help you get unstuck, move you forward, help you grow as a person, empower you to get autonomy over situations, change your brain health for the better. Being curious changes your brain health for the better. Who doesn't want to improve brain health? Help you process instead of suppress. You know, that really is the key. These are triggers. And in doing so, increase your health span and longevity. I mean, that is so cool. I want to say those again. Curiosity will expand your life experience, help you get unstuck, move you forward help you grow as a person, empower you to get autonomy over situations, change your brain health for the better, help you process instead of suppress, and in doing so, increase your health span and longevity. So health span is how healthy you are as you age. So not only do you want to live longer, but you want to live longer in a healthy way. And curiosity is key to that. You know that there's research showing that the dementias, Alzheimer's, cognitive decline and those kinds of things, a lot of that is, it comes from us not using our mind enough and not, and that when we don't use our mind, our brain gets unhealthy. Or if you use your mind incorrectly, like suppressing and that kind of thing, that makes your, that, that's, in, that's an unhealthy mind, which sends an unhealthy wave, energy waves through the brain and, and re- causes an unhealthy brain. An unhealthy brain, an unhealthy mind means unhealthy body. And over time, it's cumulative. So your vulnerability to cognitive decline and, and those kinds of things increases when we don't keep our mind managed. Mind management is critical. That's what I talk about on this podcast, what I talk about in my app, my NeuroCycle app, which I strongly recommend you guys get because it is life-saving. In fact, we have 20% of the web, um, the web version and the, the details and the link are in the show notes. And we have a challenge running at the moment and I'd love you to join me. 63-day challenge you can jump on at any point, even though we already way into this. Never mind, you can still jump on because inside the app there are webinars and you can go and fo- they're in a library. So all the ones that I've already done um, to help you through this challenge already in that library. And, I, in the, and the webinars are great because they're a feature inside the in NeuroCycle app where I interact with you, answer questions, walk you through the process. I hold your hand four times a month and I'm there to help you. So I encourage you, if you haven't already, go to the link and details in the show notes and jump on the, on the, on the challenge, get the app, take advantage of the discount and learn to get curious because a massive part of the neurocycle is being curious, asking questions. Just think of when a child's growing up as they are starting to learn to speak. It's why mommy this or why daddy this? And then you answer and they say why. And then you answer and they say why. And that's just brilliant. Sometimes it can be you know, infuriating because you're trying to do something and you eventually, you know, you might find, oh, because I said so, you know, and it will happen. But, you know, try and always give some sort of reason. That child is being curious. That child is growing their brain. They're growing their mind. They're finding out about life. They are being curious. So curiosity, you can see I'm very into curiosity. Okay, so curiosity and asking questions is so healthy for our mental and emotional well-being. In fact, it's a crucial aspect of managing your mind, which is your driving life force. If you think of the, your mind, let me, I glossed over that statement. Your mind is your driving life force. Your mind loves being curious. Your mind is curiosity. Your mind is constantly asking, answering, and discussing. Your mind is think, feeling, and choosing, thinking, feeling, and choosing around what you're being curious about. 
So I'm telling you information. You are in your mind asking questions. You're thinking, feeling, and choosing in response. And your thinking, feeling, and choosing is generating a curiosity where you are curious to hear, hopefully are curious to hear what I've got to say and, and how to do this. As you're in a conversation with someone, as you go and watch a movie, I mean, that's a great example. You watch a movie, you're curious to see what's going to happen with the character, characters and the plot and the, and the climax and the, and the, uh, the builds that story builds to a climax and what happens at the end and reading a book. We're constantly curious. What should we eat? How is this going to turn out, this meal? What's this new restaurant? How are my new friends? What are we going to talk about? We live in a state of curiosity. And that state's natural. But when we deliberately and intentionally add questioning to the process and guide that curiosity, we are increasing our brain health, as I said, and health span and longevity. So much out there on biohacking on longevity. And, and boy, I'm planning on living for a long time too. But I know that one of the main things, and I've done a podcast on this as well, is how you're managing your mind. And curiosity keeps that mind going. It keeps it sharp and active. So it's a fundamental process in my mind management system. And my mind management system, as I've said, is the neurocycle. Throughout the neurocycle and every step, you are gathering awareness. What am I feeling? What is going on in my body as I feel this? Where, when? How is this happening? Who, what, when, where, why? What's more detail? Where is this happening? Where is this coming from? It's curiosity throughout. Okay, you've been curious, you, you are being curious in how you show up in your emotions, your behaviors, your perspective, your body sensations, and ever deepening layers until you get to the core through asking, answering, and discussing. So the whole overarching process is ask, answer, discuss, ask, answer, discuss, ask, answer, discuss. You've been curious. And as you're asking, answering, and discussing, you're thinking, feeling, and choosing. That's the mind in action. This enables you to do a deep dive into the inner workings of your conscious subconscious and non-conscious mind that I talk about all the time. I've done a whole podcast on the difference between the three and I refer to it often throughout. So what is curiosity doing in your mind and brain? It's creating an energy and neurochemical flow through the brain that results in an increasingly malleable state in the relevant brain networks. Let me say that simplistically. It changes the way that the energy flows in the brain and it changes the way that the neurochemicals flow in the brain in a constructive way that enables the networks that are driving you to be loosened up so that you can either add to them or change them or fix them or whatever. If they're not loosened up, they're stuck and then you're stuck in that pattern of thinking. So to break a pattern of thinking and to build a new habit, curiosity starts creating an energy wave through the brain that starts loosening up those networks and preparing for change. You get an increase in gamma wave Activity, which if gamma wave, I always use the example of when a wave crashes on the beach, the little waves or the gamma waves. And when you are in this curious state, we get a lot of gamma activity, which is actually the activity we need to grow the brain. It's, it stimulates a wave pattern that's fertile ground for brain growth. And when your brain grows, you're getting, uh, goes in the right direction. You're getting healthier. When your brain grows in the wrong direction, you're not getting healthy. So that's why being curious is going to help you decide, oopsie, I'm thinking in the wrong way. How can I change this? Whereas versus, okay, I'm just going to keep thinking in this way. So then you're going to, you know, you're building the the, the wrong kind of network. So your conscious mind, uh, this is an interesting one. So when you are being curious, your conscious mind doesn't multitask. Okay. Multitasking is a myth for the conscious mind. So consciously we do one thing at a time fast, but we do one thing, finish, one thing, finish, one thing, finish, one thing, finish. And we, the, the more we've, we manage our mind, the more effective we get at doing that in our conscious mind. But our non-conscious mind, which is the biggest part of you, runs 24-7. Conscious mind is slow, only operates when you're awake. Non-conscious mind never stops. It never runs out of energy. It's infinite in size and ability and what it, at capacity. It's on your side. It stores every experience. It is scanning every experience to find the stuff that's good, the bad, and the ugly and making you aware of it. It is running your body. It is doing a lot. So your non-conscious mind is extremely active. And it is, it's not, it's going beyond multitasking because it's doing so many things simultaneously. So your conscious mind switches between tasks. Your non-conscious mind works at a level far exceeding multitasking and incredibly fast. So when you ask questions or pose questions to yourself, when you get curious, you are allowing a funneling effect between the conscious and the non-conscious mind. So by you asking a question, you are opening the doorway. You're allowing a funneling effect of the conscious question going to the non-conscious mind and creating an interaction between the two, which is brilliant. You want that. 
It's grabbing the wisdom that's inside of you and grabbing the power that's inside of you to solve problems, to gain knowledge, to expand knowledge, to grow. All those things I said in the beginning, to bring brain health into your brain, to grow your brain. The non-conscious mind gathers all the relevant existing thoughts related to the questions that you ask. So you ask that question, you send it through to the non-conscious, the non-conscious searches and finds all the trees with their thought trees, with their memories that are relevant to the question, sends them back up one at a time at different speeds to the subconscious. The subconscious is kind of like a holding bay and they pop in and out of the non-conscious because the non-conscious is, I'm sorry, the in, the non, they come from the non-conscious, which is super fast, into the subconscious, which is like a holding bay and it's a bit slower, and then into the conscious mind. So it kind of holds there and then they pop in and out. So you've got this movement from the non-conscious to the subconscious to the conscious through the subconscious mind at about 40 actions per second, which we consciously perceive in chunks every few seconds. So ask the question, it digs into your non-conscious mind, your non-conscious mind finds all of these, pushes them into the subconscious at 40 times a second, and then we grab them into our conscious mind every few seconds. And then we use that information to help us answer the question. And that exercise alone is like going to the gym. I mean, it's an excellent, literally an excellent exercise to develop your mind, to develop your mind management skills. So it's, it's really brilliant. So that subconscious mind is like a doorway between the conscious and, and non-conscious, focus, forcing your conscious mind to focus singly on the one question and embedded within that, within the non-conscious mind that the non-conscious mind is funneling through. So this in, is, this is a very energy dense task. So your brain is activated to channel all the energy specifically to this task, which is good for brain health. So when this is curiosity demands a lot of energy of the mind, brain and body. So your, it's, which is good because your brain then channels that energy very focused on the areas of your brain that need to, that your whole brain's always active, but there's different parts that are more active at certain times. So we see like more gamma in the frontal lobe with, when you're consciously and deliberately asking that question and in that sense that if you have a balanced alpha wave and then a theta wave. So it's all this, this sort of pattern that is created that enables you to go into an ideal brain state, which we call the Goldilocks state. And that then helps you to function. I've spoken about the Goldilocks concept before when it comes to worry. Same thing's operating over here. So it's like going to gym or yoga and doing an intense workout. It, it hurts initially, like when you first start working out, but over time your body shape and physical and mental health improve. So sometimes asking those questions, you don't want to really ask them or hear the answers, but it's really good because over time you, you're going to get good information to help you. You know, those intrusive thoughts, I've done a podcast about that. It's the curiosity that brings the intrusive thoughts up and you see them as your best friend and that helps you to manage them. Go listen to that past podcast on how to see intrusive thoughts as your new best friends. But new best friend, yeah, friends, there's lots of them. That's really helping with your psychoneurobiological networks to improve them when we're curious. So, and we want to keep stretching and exercising our psychoneurobiological networks. It improves resilience as well, which makes us bounce back a bit quicker. We become like the, the reed that bends in the wind versus the old, the branch that breaks and cracks and falls off. And that's what resilience is. So in general, now just to sort of wrap this up, what's curiosity doing in your life? Um, it's problem solving. Curiosity encourages creative problem solving, seeing things from different angles. This can lead to innovation and the development of new effective strategies in your life or business. You reconceptualize and see things in different ways from different perspectives. Problems become objectives to solve. And failures and mistakes become information to learn from. That's what curiosity does. Curiosity takes a problem from a problem to an objective to solve and a failure from a failure to information to learn from. And mistakes, information to learn from. That's what curiosity does. Problem solving also helps us develop emotional maturity and self-regulation. Self-regulation then leads to autonomy in our lives. Through questions, we are able to gain a sense of our own abilities and learn did, uh, did you hear that? So it's questions we can also gain a sense of our own abilities and learn how we can adapt and change to improve our abilities. It's very empowering. And then adaptability. Curiosity helps you to be adaptable. In a rapidly changing world, being curious is essential to adapt. It helps you stay open to new ideas. Curiosity keeps you open-minded and making it easier to adapt to new technologies, trends, environments, changes, belief systems. Curiosity grows 
possi- a possibilities and probabilities mindset. Those two always like, to, we want them to work together. Possibilities are the hope that you can achieve. Probabilities are all the things that can happen on the way to get there so that you're not thrown. If this doesn't work, you'll do that. You'll do that as you get towards your, your possibility. And a curiosity allows this possibility, probability mindset, allowing you to shift, to, to develop, allowing you to shift quickly and effectively if plans change or need to be changed without being thrown or paralyzed into inaction. And this relates to constantly growing our minds, improves curiosity, improves relationships, plays a, a foster better relationships. You find out more about the other person. You understand more about them. You're more curious. It develops empathy, stronger connections, communication. There's share giving back and forth. If you ask a question, they're going to answer. It creates that dyad relationship, the back and forth. So the whole point of thinking, learning, education, technology, medicine, philosophy should be to build a better world. And with connectedness and humanness as its, as its core fundamental purpose, that's what curiosity is generating. It's creating, a, it's teaching us to, to be better humans, more connected, and building a, building a world that's more connected and more human in how we function. So, no. Curiosity did not kill the cat. Curiosity only gives us a deeper and richer life with more understanding about ourselves, our thoughts, and our mental and emotional well-being. So don't be scared to ask questions. There's never a stupid question. Yesterday I caught myself saying, can I ask a stupid question in a meeting? And I stopped myself immediately thinking, hey, no question is ever stupid. Okay. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please share, like, subscribe, give me a five-star review share this with other people and be sure to come back next week. And I know I've said a lot. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my email list, go subscribe to my email list because you get alerted to all the podcasts and specials plus the blog, which is a written version of the podcast. So you can go and read it there, which will help. And remember to listen each week because I'm going to give you valuable information on how you can manage your mind, which is something we all need to do. So while I give you the information, believe you me, I'm getting really helped to manage my mind. Thanks so much. See you next week.